Thank you. Before we turn to the question paper, honourable members, under <coughs> standing order 354, I have allowed Mr. Speaker to ask an urgent oral question, text of which has been circulated. Call uh, honourable member for Russian, Mr. Speaker. Could I, my director, in? Uh, I wish to ask the Minister for Education, Sport and Culture whether it is his intention under the Education Institutions Directions 2020 to issue every pupil attending school on the 17th of June with a legal notice to observe and abide by Public Health Directorate guidance, what the implications are of breaching the directions, particularly for those under the age of criminal responsibility, what other means were considered of complying with public health guidance, and whether he considers this a proportionate response. And just before I call on the Minister, Honourable Members, you may remove jackets uh, if you wish. I call on the Honourable Member for Ramsey, Dr Allenson, to reply. Mr President, the education institutions' regulations are aimed at requiring schools to close, and the only enforcement actions provided for is aimed at the responsible body who do not comply with the temporary closure directions, and which is enforceable by injunction. It is not the intention of the Department of Education, Sport and Culture to personally issue a legal notice to observe and abide by Public Health Directorate, Cabinet Office or Department of Health and Social Care guidance. The information is, however, published online and will change depending upon the circumstances that the island faces. This will be reinforced with children attending their registered school as the situation and circumstances, circumstances change, particularly if things alter for the worse. In particular, Direction 5.1 refers to taking reasonable steps to observe and abide by such guidance in relation to social distancing or self-isolation while attending their registered school. Currently, the guidance is that there will be no social distancing or need to self-isolate as there are no active cases of coronavirus on the island and therefore it is not a current issue and is not going to result in any sanctions. If the situation alters as per Public Health Directorate, Cabinet Office or Department of Health and Social Care guidance, then it may be necessary to consider social distancing measures, whether one metre, two metre or whatever is deemed appropriate at the time, as well as considering the age and capability of the young person con concerned. These changes will be incorporated into the school rules. The ultimate sanction, if there was a risk to others in the school setting, would be for the pupil to be suspended for failing to follow school rules for which there is an appeals process to the, to the school's governing body if it is deemed by the parent that such action is inappropriate. The approach being taken was intended to reinforce the seriousness which the department takes in regard to the safety in our schools and protecting the health of all pupils, our teachers and all other valuable staff who work in the education system. Thank you, Mr President. Supplementary question, <coughs> Mr Speaker. Uh, thank you. Um, the Minister will appreciate that directions are a legal instrument under, in, in law rather than just school rules, and 5.2 of the, guide, of the directions do say that the head teacher or their delegate shall issue directions to all attendees at the school in order to observe and abide by public health guidance. Um, does the Minister not believe that that is somewhat overkill when we are dealing here with children, and were there not sufficient powers under the instrument of government or the school rules to actually enforce this, uh, this particular outcome? Minister to reply. Thank you, Mr President. Paragraph 5.2 does refer to the issuance of directions, but it is simply intended to mean that, that the specified individual or body will make it known that complying with the public health guidance is a requirement. A direction may contain such other requirements for reasonable steps or provisions as the Department thinks fit, such as the requirement in paragraph 5.2 for a head teacher to tell attendees to comply with the public health guidance. But a sanction is not provided for in the education institution's regulations or the directions made under them. In relation to an attendee who fails to do so, depending on the way in which the attendee fails to comply with public health guidance, such a, per such a person may, however, be in breach of other emergency regulations and presumably the school would rely upon other powers to discipline the pupil or require a visitor to leave the premises. Thank you, Mr President. Supplementary, Mrs Lord Brennan. Thank you, Mr President. Um, Given that the Minister has said that it is not the intention for the regulations and the directors to have this effect, um, will he look at this again? And does he agree that actually part of the complexity and the difficulty and the fact that this has actually been brought to this court is because we're possibly dealing with three, maybe four different sets of provisions that have ultimately 
resulted in a situation that has caused concern. Thank you, Mr. President. Minister to reply. Well, I thank the Honourable Member for her question, but also I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking Dr Henrietta Hewitt for joining me in a webinar last night hosted by the National Association of Head Teachers. And during the 90-minute question and answer session, she, she addressed many concerns from our teachers, particularly in terms of singing and music lessons, physical education, seating arrangements and assemblies. She made it quite clear that the current lack of active cases and evidence of ne negligible community transmission within schools means that they can function in a normal way and no additional public health guidance was necessary. The regulations that were laid um, b before this Honourable Court obviously related to things last week and the situation has changed quite dramatically. However, what they do give is the ability for schools to deal with any um, worsening of the health situation on our island. But as we move out of the state of emergency, hopefully these can then um, be removed. Thank you. Now, I don't want uh, a, a wide-ranging debate on this matter. Uh, Mr Speaker, do you have a final <coughs> supplementary? Thank you. I, I'm just concerned that I don't think, and the Minister hasn't given me any reason to believe that other um, avenues were considered to, to deal with the particular problem, whether it be through the in instruments of government or school rules, and the, uh, the lack of a sanction in this does seem to underline that. Could this not be dealt with another way, Minister? Minister to reply. Thank you, Mr President. Yes, this will de be dealt with in another way as we move out of the state of emergency and can get back to a normal way of teaching. And one of the really good things that, have, that has come out this week is the fact that children can return to school this week and next week to a normal classroom without some of the restrictions that were initially anticipated when this direction was laid before the court.